So we're here tonight to talk about we are Molokai Puleo'o. Um, it's a group that was formed as a proactiveness to help decide what the future is for Molokai as far as who's going to purchase our ranch, Molokai Ranch lands. Our Molokai community is united and we stand firm in what we want for Molokai Ranch lands. Collectively, community has invested thousands of hours over many years to develop a common vision for the, future, for the island's future. Any buyer of Molokai Ranch must embrace our vision, our values, and our ideas for protecting our aina, honoring our culture, and creating a healthy economy based on wise use and good stewardship <coughs> of our natural resources. We will settle for nothing less. A, a, a bunch of us that have been involved at, in the community through the years, when we heard that Molokai Ranch was for sale, um, we started talking story. And... Um, we're all in agreement and realize very quickly that we need, like Peter was saying, we need to be proactive. Let's not wait until a buyer comes in and then we react to whoever that buyer is. What, what we want is, in terms of being proactive, is how do we attract a buyer that makes sense for this island? And what, is it, and what makes sense for this island? The residents of this island have been looking at and creating plans, various plans through the decades. And each of these plans kind of look at what the future should be for the island. What makes sense for us culturally? What makes for sense for us environmentally? What makes sense for us economically? What is smart growth for this island? And, and, and when we look at all the plans, we see that there's a common vision among all of them. So it's not like we have to all get together and try and decide what makes sense for Molokai. It, the work has been done. And, and there are multiple really amazing um, plans out there that reflect these visions and these goals and these values for what Molokai needs to be. Um, so, you know, the point of tonight is not to say we need to go make one plan for these new buyers. What we're saying is we need to unite as a community, as a single voice, stand together and say, we want this for our future. This is the vision. It's here. It's on paper. This is from decades and generations, from young to old. And it's still the same. It's been the same every, every year, year after year. So we know what we want. And that's what we want to put out. In being proactive, we want to let potential prospective buyers know that when you, if you're thinking about buying Molokai Ranch, you're not just buying a piece of property. You're coming into a community that has a long history, that has deep kuleana and connections to this whole aina, or this entire island, including all of Molokai Ranch, what they own. And we want them to know that. We need them to know that you are coming into a community, a very powerful community with very deep roots. A community that's done a lot of homework in, in, in this visioning process. A community that knows exactly what they want and exactly what's good for us. We, we want them to take notice that the community exists and we have a voice. And we are the biggest stakeholder in the purchase of this property. Um, we, are the most effect we will be the most affected, positive or negative. And we will fight if it's the wrong, you know, and that's the history of this island. We, we have a long history of fighting for what is right. And, and that fight has gone on for decades and we've won, thanks to guys like Uncle Walter and that whole generation, we've won so many of those battles. Um, so, you know, these buyers coming in, if they have their own ideas, they need to check themselves and realize that um, this community is a powerful community again. What is this place called Molokai Ranch? It's a very, very interesting place. So bear with me and let's start. Okay, so first of all, Molokai, we're talking more we're talking more about not only West End, but whatever's going to happen to West End is going to impact the whole island. This is about all of us. So Molokai Pulio'o is the old saying of Molokai, um, the island of powerful prayers. Molokai Nui Ahino. So that tells us that Molokai is not $10 a square foot. Molokai is the baby and the child of Hina. So that's a real different relationship. All of us know when we have babies, we have to take care of the baby. Molokai Aina Momona, um, all of our reefs, the North Shore Valleys, our mountains, all produce food. Ho'olehua with all of the sweet potato fields. So Molokai became very, very famous because we were a food producing island. And that should be our future. Our future should be Molokai Aina Momona. History of Molokai Ranch. Um, the Kamehamehas was in charge of all of those lands. Princess Pawahi, um, who 
founded Kamehameha Schools, got the lands from Princess Ruth. It went from the Kamehameha's Princess Ruth down to Bernice Pawahi. Um, then her husband, Charles Reed, um, got the lands after Bernice died. And then Charles Reed formed the estate called Bishop Estate. And Bishop Estate had in charge of all of these lands. And that's when the lands were sold, when they were part of the estate. And the Cook family was the last big family that um, bought that estate. And for a long time, had ranching and all kinds of different things. Pineapple was a big deal in the 1920s. And then the Cook family in the 60s received approval to develop West End. That's when our generation got involved, in the late 60s, when we went to Pauhana Inn, and on the table they had this paper mache map of the West Molokai. And on this paper mache map, map had 30,000 houses. And we're sitting over there looking at 30,000 houses and we're thinking, whoa, man, what's going to happen to our island? That's how we started as a young group getting involved in politics on Molokai was because of this really huge thing in 1968. After that, Kaluakoi um, started to get involved with outsiders. Louisiana land and oil expl exploration. They came over here with big bucks. And they were the one that said, we're going to make hotels and all kinds of development down West End. Um, we all know that those hotels never really made it down at West End. And then Briley came in 1987. This is the guys from New Zealand. They came over here. And then the guys from Japan came, uh, Alpha USA and Tokyo Kosan. So we had New Zealanders and Japanese guys coming to develop West End. And of course, they never made it either. And then in 2005, this group from um, Singapore, they bought Briley Investment. They bought the New Zealand guys out. And everything went to Singapore. And that's why we had so many clashes with these people, because we was just we wasn't thinking the same. We had two different visions of what the future should be on this island. So now they're giving up after all of these years. Our job, besides uniting, is to we'll try and get people to realize what is the true worth of Molokai Ranch. It's not 260 million. That's crazy. On that land, get unexploded ordinances, get brown fields, get county land fields, get abandoned Kalukoi Hotel, abandoned Molokai Lodge, abandoned tourist tentacles, abandoned golf course, disintegrated roads, major erosion, the pipeline all leaking all over the place, there are no more permits for Well 17. That's the big one. Well 17. Everybody got to get in your head, Well 17, Well 17. That's the one. That's the fresh water. That well, they've been using it for years and years and years and years without a permit. For every day that you operate without a permit, you can get charged $5,000. They're in the MIS, the Molokai Irrigation System that was built for homesteaders without a permit. The value of their land goes way down when they have water problems. When you don't have water, the value of your land goes way down. We all know the vision. We talked about um, the plans that we have. We have, we have choke plans on Molokai. Um, we just get, we need to have people follow those plans. So we got to make sure that these guys coming over here know we get on plan, know that we reunited, and that this is what we want for Molokai. And if you guys, if those guys agree, we can welcome them. If they don't agree, we can ask them to save their money and go elsewhere. We got to put and build on this land the things that will malama the land, take care of the environment, and send our kids to college at the same time, okay? And the, and the vision is clear. It's been written. It's been talked over and over again. I, I pray that we will be able to um, buy it and run it successfully. Um, but if not, you know, again, we can, you know, attract the kind of people that would buy it and run it the way 
the community would um, be benefiting from. We definitely want what is good for everybody, not just certain people. It's our people. These corporations that come, they don't care about us. All they care about is their pockets. But what is important is they have to learn, they have to know who we are. So I think my, my main thing I wanna say is that we just gotta be one voice. We gotta come together, everybody, because we love Molokai.